One man with his finger on the pulse of Britain's place in the world is author and broadcaster and podcaster Constantine Kissing, whose book An Immigrant's Love Letter to the West became a Sunday Times bestseller in 2022. Let's be honest, uh, he's never looked back since. In fact, he was looking quite far ahead before that as well. After growing up in the Soviet Union, Constantine now enjoys a unique perspective on the brilliance of the UK. He made waves again last week when his praise for Britain on BBC Question Time sparks a self-loathing and ridiculous response from a pro-Palestine rabble-rouser. Well, today, as Tory MP Mike Freer is forced to give up politics after death threats from Islamists and their supporters, I want to ask whether we're simply giving in now to extremists. Constantin joins me now. Look, thank you very, very much. Look, today I am legitimately incredibly angry. We've got an MP who is, frankly, having to give up because of largely Islamist extremism, a prime minister who doesn't feel the need to say anything publicly about that, a leader of the opposition who doesn't feel the need to say publicly anything about that. I mean, what the heck is going on here? Well, Patrick, we shouldn't be surprised. You'll remember, of course, very well the tragic murder of Sir David Ames, after which cowardly MP after MP, both Tory and Labour, went into the chamber after their colleague had just been murdered by an Islamic extremist. Uh, and pretended that he had in fact been murdered by a tweet uh, when they talked endlessly about online hate, digital harm, the online safety bill uh, to do uh, the one thing that they always do, which is avoid naming the problem, which is we have a major issue with Islamist uh, extremists in this country uh, who are using violence to intimidate other people into silence and into uh, doing whatever it is they want. And as long as we continue to cower uh, and bow down to this, it will continue because one of the most depressing things about uh, watching the reactions today is, as you've alluded to, not only have the prime minister or the leader of the opposition said anything, but actually nobody has anything to say. Even the people who are deeply concerned as you and I are, uh, Mm. they're not saying we must have a task force within the police or we must do X or we must do Y. They're all expressing their concern. I have had enough of people's concern. I would like the government to actually do something and the police to actually do something to the point where maybe an elected member of parliament can go about their business without being threatened into submission. Could we Mm. maybe have that? Is that unreasonable to ask in a democratic free country like ours? Well, no, it's not. But again, today, Lindsay Hoyle, who I think is probably all right, decides to come out and say, look, MPs need to be nicer to each other. I'm sorry, but it's not MPs that have made Mike Freer quit, is it? It's not MPs that stabbed David Amos to death. It's not MPs who are rampaging through London every single Saturday with anti-Semitic signs and occasionally beating up Jewish people that they happen to pass in the street. You know, we have a massive problem here. That is radical Islamist ideology. It's been allowed into Britain, though, hasn't it, Constantine? And people like you have been have been calling this out. But why have we developed this massive self-loathing in Britain? Do you think? Well, one of the things, first of all, that shows the level of fear and cowardice and self-loathing that we have is the fact that a couple of weeks ago, you'll remember, Patrick. I'm sure you covered it on the show the banning of the Islamist group Hizbut Tahrir. Uh, Hizbut Tahrir was banned in the UK finally a couple of weeks ago. Do you know uh, other countries where Hizbut Tahrir has been banned for a long time? Pakistan, Bangladesh, every Arab country but three, every Muslim country in Central Asia, Indonesia, the most populous country in the world. And what it shows you is we basically are more tolerant of Islamist extremists than Muslim countries are and the Muslim rulers are and the Muslim governments are. Uh, And so I just... and. To say nothing of the fact, of course, uh, a, a subject that has been covered both on, on GB News and on trigonometry, uh, the grooming gangs. Yeah. Again, why were they not given the attention and the police action that they should have been given? Because people were afraid. And initially, sensitivities about, quote, race and diversity become fears uh, when we allow people to use violence to silence people. Uh, into an action. So uh, until we have a leader or a government or a police constable or chief constable or whoever it is that actually gets a grip of this issue and says, we are not going to tolerate violent extremists in our country silencing MPs, uh, this will continue and it will Mm. only get worse. Yeah, indeed. But they're also going to have to be up for the fight, Constantine. This is frankly, a problem that I could see coming a mile off, right, which is I don't think they are. Clearly not. I mean, they're all at the moment willing to just roll over and have their 
belly's tickled by a load of mad Islamists, right? And you know, they're going to have to be prepared for massive protests. They're going to have to be prepared for death threats. They're going to have to be prepared for people lining up outside primary schools and trying to shut them down. They're going to have to be prepared for all of this stuff. But the fact that they have to be prepared for it surely shows that we have a massive problem. And I don't know about you, but I think there's a lot to lose here in Britain. We have got a lot to lose. And just before I get your answer on this, I know that you think that there's a lot to lose in Britain because this is what happened when you were on Question Time. Just saying, and I hope you don't find this insulting, you know, some quite basic stuff about how great Britain is, right? This is the reaction that you got. Here it is. I think Sonia's absolutely right on a practical level, but I think at a cultural level there's something perhaps even more important, which is we've got to stop talking down our country. I'm a first-generation immigrant to this country, and I get annoyed hearing people talk endlessly about how we're the worst country in the world, we're the most sexist country in the world, we're the most racist country. It's all nonsense. This is one of the best places to live in the world, and that's what we should be talking about, the fact that we're... Yeah. Sh yeah. 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 Shame on... Well, this is... This is the best... This is exactly the problem that I'm talking about. Constantine, why did you get that reaction? How concerned should we be? Well, one of the things that you would not have seen on your TV screen, Patrick, but you would have seen if you'd been there uh, in the audience or on the panel is actually she was not the only one shouting. You may have heard other male voices shouting as well. So there were several people uh, who were so offended by the idea that Britain is actually a really nice country uh, that they felt the need to shout me down. Uh, and I think uh, in her case, as we later discovered, it speaks to an issue that we've covered uh, obviously quite extensively now, which is we're educating young people to hate their own country. Uh, there's no doubt about that. And one of the things that happened with this young woman afterwards, one of her tweet, uh, one of her teachers tweeted at me saying how proud she is of her student for shouting down somebody on the panel. Uh, so and when I pointed this out, she, of course, blocked me because these people can dish it out, but they can't take it. However, my point is this. If we continue to be a society that teaches its young people to hate their own country, their own values, their own civilization, then we will have this. And at the same time, of course, there is the unholy alliance of the, the kind of woke progressive left and Islamists uh, mm. who, who, who work hand in hand. Uh, and, um, you know, as long as we continue to have that, uh, we will continue to have the problem. So the number one thing that I always try to tell British people is uh, the country is not perfect, of course, the culture is not perfect, the history is not perfect, but this is a great place by comparison to everywhere else that has ever existed in the history of humanity. And we have to embrace our values. And the most important thing that you can do uh, is teach your children the values of your society, uh, the importance of valuing what you have, of being grateful for uh, the opportunity uh, to enjoy the privilege that no one ever talks about, but it's the one privilege that we all have, which is first world privilege. And if people were actually to understand just how fortunate and lucky they are mm -hmm. to be living in societies that are as free and as prosperous still as ours are, maybe at that point we wouldn't listen to the lunatics who shout out and want to talk down our country as much as these people do.